Hey, let's make a super simple vaporwave landscape. Just gonna make a plane, subdivide it, add some sort of NPR type of non-photorealistic uh, materials, add some lighting, shading, and a whole bunch of other effects and still get this to render almost in real time with EV. I'm using Blender 2.9 and I'm just gonna add a plane here. So let's go here and add a plane and scale that guy up, S for scale, scale it up a lot more. So we're just creating a real basic landscape with this. And I think my mouse is dying. The middle mouse button isn't working as well as it used to. I guess that happens. I'm going into edit mode. I'm going to right click, I'm going to subdivide. And I'll come over to the subdivide guy over here and just type in 100. So we'll subdivide it 100 times so we get all these super fun polys. I'm going to hit Alt A to deselect everything and uh, then hit C for circle select and select uh, just a ribbon of, of polys here and then do the same thing over here, just left clicking a whole bunch of polys, then escape, then turn on circle select up here and not circle select, but proportional editing. And sometimes it's called soft select in other programs and then switch to random. And so in this way, when I uh, pull these polys up, uh, vertices up it'll randomize how much they get pulled up but also with uh, soft select selected or proportional editing selected it'll do it in a, in a sort of scaled way so I'm gonna hit G and then Z and then if I roll my mouse wheel you can see the direction it's going so I'm hitting uh, G to grab and Z to move it up on one axis so this way I can just create sort of this bumpy landscape but trying to leave like a smooth path roughly in the center there there we go so it's a quick way of, of building that and that looks good. So, uh, joy. All right, so let's uh, go ahead and shade this a little bit. So let's go over to the shading tab. <clears throat> shading tab, there we are. And let's give this guy a uh, new material. And so this is the default principled BSDF. Let's change this to um, uh, convert to RGB. So uh, I'm gonna hit, uh, just type in search there convert or shader to RGB rather shader to RGB and we do this to get that sort of cartoonish uh, non photo real look on these polys and then we need a color ramp so I'm just going to hit shader or rather um, converter color ramp plug that in right there and uh, and then what we're going to do is um, change this from linear to constant and then maybe have this go over here. So this way we get this pointy sort of light sort of thing going on right here. Let's add another flag in here and maybe make this guy about like uh, a little bit gray right there. Okay, and so then uh, if we change this light right here to a um, sunlight, let's change it to a sunlight, turn the power way down and maybe make it like a color of like orange or something like that. But uh, we're not going to see anything in the shading viewport until we actually either switch to uh, rendered mode or change this to scene lights and scene world. I'll just switch it to rendered mode so we see what's going on here. And we're not going to see any color on this either because, uh, well, we might, but uh, we're not going to see much uh, while it's uh, doing this because what this uh, shader RGB does, if we're only using one channel, it essentially makes it gray. So what we have to do is uh, break it up. So I'm going to hit Shift A and separate to RGB and then plug that in and then duplicate this ramp a few times so uh, shift D shift D and plug in the green guy right here and the blue guy right there and then we need to recombine all that so shift A and search for combine RGB plug that in and then plug in this color here, green, and then this color right here. So we get this uh, funky color. You can change the color of the material here and you'll see what it's doing, going in different directions. So um, play around with the color of that sunlight to get something close to what you want. Uh, so uh, uh, maybe turn down the brightness as well. Get some fun stuff that way. Let's go with a blue, bluish sort of color on this side and turn down the brightness even more, there we go, so maybe about right there, 
and then let's duplicate this sunlight. So I've got the sunlight selected right there. I'm going to hit Shift D and move it over here and then just rotate that, hitting R to rotate. Change the color of this one to something else like yellow or something. So I get some sort of uh, multicolored light system going into this landscape. That's kind of fun, but it's still pretty bright. But that should get fixed soon when we turn down and when we add volumes and so forth to this this thing. So let's move that about right there, maybe right there. Everyone's going to look different, and you're never quite sure how this is going to turn out. And that's okay. I like that. Um, so a few things I do to make the quality of EV a little bit better. Uh, let's go over to screen space, screen space reflections. Turn that on. Turn on bloom. Turn on ambient uh, occlusion. Coming over to shadows, let's turn up the cascade size on the sunlight, and if we have any point lights, we can use that, as well as high bitmap, high bit, high uh, bit depth there. All right, so we've got that going on for us. Now, um, let's go ahead and turn the sunlight down pretty far on these. I don't like how much it's blowing everything out. It's about right there. Let's just make that one for now. Let's like this one. Let's make that one one for now. This is way too dark. Let's turn it up that way. And turn this one up a little bit so we get it sort of evened out. Whatever it is you're looking for. It's okay to have some of them black. And you can also adjust that shader that we built. Uh, so you can get different types of uh, points here. Might make it a little bit brighter. If we wanted this one to be gray, you can sort of give it that sort of look. And it mixes these colors together in an interesting way. And these colors. Uh, don't have to be full blast. You can turn that down. You might get some different looks. Yeah, like that. That one over here. Yeah, there we go. So you just sort of play with it until you get some some colors that you're going for. And then I'd like to add the the cliche grid to all of this as well. Uh, and if you've made it this far and you haven't saved, you might want to save. I'll save this in September projects and call it. Uh, Vapor Kitsch. There we go. All right, now let's add a um, mix shader. Shader, mix shader. Put that right there. And let's add a emission shader. And let's make that the Vaporwave prerequisite purple. So we'll just add this in, make that bright purple. The strength is about a one. Now we want to mix this together as a wireframe, so we're going to hit Shift A, go to Input, and find the wireframe node. Input, wireframe. And so we'll just plug the wireframe factor here into the factor of the mix shader. So that way we get the wireframe on the mesh itself. And if you want to use pixel size, uh, you can just change that up to like one, and you have a little bit more control over the pixel size, depending on what you're doing. You can also increase the brightness of that or turn the brightness down you have that so whatever look you're going for all right so we want to get the camera roughly in this direction so let's just line it up right here move this right here zoom in about right there looks good and then I'll go to view align view align active camera to view so that way the camera is right there let's select the camera let us zoom the camera out a little bit to so increase the perspective you can move things around there so that's the look that we're going for. And uh, now we can start adding some other elements. Control S to save. And I, ma I made this super simple. Uh, uh, I just added a few more things than that one I made it a couple days ago. I'll hit Shift D. So I've got a duplicate. I'm going to hit GX and move that up here. Uh, I'll go over to the, not UV editing, layout mode so I can see what I'm doing a little bit better. And uh, I'll just uh, scale this guy up a little bit. And uh, GZ, move it down. So it's a. Uh, about right there and then I'll just add a couple mountain peaks into the distance so I'll go into edit mode select a vertice hit GZ and move this down you can hear my nephew there we go move that right there and hit GZ I live in a house with many children that's why I don't make too many of these tutorials because they are full of noise all right so I've added a couple peaks there, which I guess you can have or not have. And uh, normally you can sculpt those out and make them as much as detailed as you want. 
but uh, from this perspective in the camera's point of view, we can see they are right there. So then as we move uh, the camera forward, we'll see those uh, start to appear. I also added the cliche vaporwave sun. So let's go ahead and add that. Choose whatever disk you want or spherical shape. Let's move this guy all the way to the end. And uh, let's give it a material. Let's go over to shading to do that. Material. Looking through the camera, we see it. Uh, we don't see it. GZ. S. Nope. Where are you? It's right there. Oh, that might be the clipping going on there, why we don't see it. Let's give that a uh, emission material. Just delete that and add a basic emission material here. So let's go emission and plug that up to the surface. And the color will be, of course, a yellowish orange color. And then we'll move that down. If we don't see it, select the camera, come over to the camera's clipping options here and just increase the distance. And then we start to see that emerge. So, uh, by default, the camera is at 100 meters, but the viewport is 1,000 meters. So I don't know why that is. Uh, but that's why you might not see it if it's down there. So let's put that down a little bit, GZ, and look through it right there. So there's our sun. If we want it to have a larger arch, just make it bigger, and GZ, move it down so that way we see it, something like that. All right, so we're on our way. Let's make the world uh, a little black. There we go. And uh, what else can we do to this? Um, we need to add... Uh, some volumetrics to this space. So uh, let's go ahead and we can just do that by adding a cube and make it a volumetric. Or in the world settings, come over to volume, give it a little volume scatter. And now a little is going to be a lot by default. So we'll just change that to like 0.1. So that way we see it that way, maybe 0 0.05. So that way it doesn't obscure the sunlight completely. 0 0.01. There we go. And then maybe turn up the anisotropy. Anis I can't remember how to pronounce that. Change, uh, toy with this until you get the look that you're going for. You could also just uh, create another volume that's attached to the camera and try some tricks that way. But this is, this is getting there. Um, what I also do is I come over to the color management tab in the render settings and I might decrease the gamma to increase the contrast and maybe increase the brightness to try to get some different looks that way. Play around with it that way. I think that sun also needs that uh, subdivision surface to smooth it out a little bit. There we go. So we're getting there. Let's push that a little further away. So GX, it's kind of cool how it does that though. GX, and move this over here, move that up GZ. So it's right there. Looks like the sun needs to be a lot brighter. So we'll add five. So that way it's gonna have this nice glow, maybe 10. There we go. So now we see that intense glowing that we got going on and uh, maybe make these uh, suns a little bit brighter too. come over here and maybe make that six way too bright four, and uh, make this guy a little bit brighter as well let's try seven then increase the density on our volume here so maybe 0 0.05 and it's still obscuring the sun so I guess it's gonna have to be lower 0 0.02 and then decrease the sun light one Oh, I like that. That's looking good. And then maybe that one can be five. So with that weird NPR sh uh, uh, setting that we put on this material, it doesn't light it in an uh, uh, intuitive way. It, it, it lights it at, at these different steps. And uh, so it, it's kind of cool how that works out. All right. And we can uh, change the rotation on those lights, too. Uh, that might change the way that these polys are being lit. So you can play around with that. And it also will change the way it's lighting the sky, depending on your settings. And this reflection here, you probably want to avoid. That's kind of nice. You might add other lights or other suns uh, to get the look that you're going for. Okay, you can play with that all day. And I don't think there's too much else that I added to this. Uh, I think uh, what I did from here is I just animated the camera to move forward. So that's pretty easy to do. Uh, we just uh, let's come over to layout. And so we have our timeline here. Let's make it about 500 frames long. 
zoom out, just roll the mouse wheel. And uh, let's select the camera. And with that camera right there, I'll just hit I for location. And uh, let's split our view so we see what the camera sees. And zoom in right here. Let's go to rendered view. And then uh, let's move our timeline to the end, 500. And then just pull it towards the end. It looks like it's going to have to move around a little bit. Let's also have it move up and over here. So we see roughly this. And of course, we could make this time, we could make this whole landscape longer and, and do all these different things with it. But this is fine for this demo. So let's have the movement end right there. So I hit I, location. And always, if you are new to Blender, your shortcuts are always contextual depending on where your mouse is hovering. So I, location. And so now it should be moving through here, but we might have to make adjustments based on where we are at different points in time. So maybe right here, we nudge the camera over a little bit. So I'll just say, hey, come over here at this point in time. I, location, and then move it through here. And then at this point in time, maybe it's nudged over a little bit this way. And I, location, and then we see it moving through here. And there we go. So play and it's going to be a little bit flickery when it's playing right here but it should be all right might want to turn on motion blur that's also kind of cool to have and i think i might want to make those that grid a little less thick so let's go over to shading change that to like 1.5 pixels come back over here that's a little better and uh maybe make this guy a little darker yeah, more blue right there. That looks good. Uh, and then come over to the color shading here and give it some more contrast right there. Okay, it's getting close. Save. Uh, and then uh, one thing I, I tend to do is I overdo this. Uh, I can't help it. I really can't help myself. Um, let's uh, switch this uh, view right here to um, the graph editor. I also have a dog. That's another reason why, and the dog barks at everything. So uh, this is the curve right here for the camera moving through here, and it's speeding up and slowing down. I want that to be a linear movement for this animation, so I'll just say interpolation mode linear. So now we have a straight line, uh, though right there might not be the way to go. Uh, we want this to be a curve. So with this one, I think we want it just to start right there, linear, and then this one can be a curve. You know what? I'm just going to keep it this way for now. I didn't have all those other keyframes in the previous animation. But what I do want is I also want to set a keyframe for the rotation so I can add some rotational noise. So on the first frame, or it doesn't really matter what frame you choose, she is a uh, brave dog who keeps us all safe. Just add a keyframe anywhere for rotation. And once I do that, I can uh, hit in in this window and come over to uh, modifiers and we'll add some noise to the X rotation here. So add modifier, noise. And the default noise is pretty noisy. And I'm gonna hit the period key to focus in on that noise. You can see it right there. And so if I hit spacebar to play, you can say, well, that doesn't work. So what we can do is first turn down the strength a lot to 0 0.02 and see that's the new noise. And if you just have the camera shaking up and down, it gives this kind of cool, you're on a car sort of look about it. And uh, so here we go. In the other video I made, I didn't have that kind of noise going, but I kind of like that look. It's a little bit too subtle. And you can spread out that noise. So we can make it tight or spread it out, depending on the look that you're going for. It's too close, spread it out more. So you can get an idea of what that noise looks like now. And if it's not able to play in real time, you can switch over to this uh, view and you get a more accurate view of the uh, animation. You can see what that noise is looking like. That's all right. So if you don't want it to just uh, be noisy on one axis, you can copy that noise with the little copy icon right here and then select another rotation axis, paste it. But what I do is I change the phase or the offset. So that way it's a different noise pattern. And so now we have the noise on the X and Y. And that is, it gives the look that we're kind of flying. It gives it a more of a organic look. And then um, let's go ahead and paste it to the ro uh, R Z rotation and change the phase on that as well. Just a random number here. 
There we go. So now we have the shaky camera flying through the scene. If it's too much, you can crank that number down, 0.01. There we go. Okay, so we have all that going for us. I like these shadows that it, that it creates. That's kind of nice. Uh, rendering on this, if I hit one, if I hit F12, it should take just uh, uh, 0.8 seconds, and I'm on a laptop with a 2070 NVIDIA card. You can see it put in the uh, motion blur and everything, but I think it could use some compositing to make it a little bit better. So let's go over to compositing, and uh, let's click on use nodes, and let's go ahead and add uh, save. Let's go ahead and I'm using Node Wrangler so I can just uh, shift right click and drag and let's go ahead and add a viewer. There's probably a shortcut for that too but I don't know what it is. Output viewer and uh, my brain is full. I, I don't have any room for any more shortcuts so that way I can see the changes as I make them. Let's do the overly done uh, chromatic aberration. So let's go to distort and uh, lens distortion. Plug that in turn on projector and turn up dispersion. And that will, with projector selected, it'll add the dispersion uh, on all the, uh, let's uh, go ahead and zoom so you can see that dispersion. Uh, with projector selected, dispersion will cause the uh, dispersion throughout the whole frame. Uh, let's cause that to fit. And without projector selected, let's turn it down a little bit, it'll cause the dispersion around the edges, which also is a cool look, whatever you're going for. And if you want both, well, just shift D, duplicate the node, have one with the projector and have one without the projector, and then you get the best of both worlds. And uh, so with this one, let's crank it up really high because that's awesome. No, that's not, it's not awesome. It's bad. It's hor horrible. Let's also add a um, uh, glare. So let's go to filter and glare. There we go. And you can have the streaky glare, or you can have the foggy glare, or you can have the ghosty glare, uh, whatever you need. Uh, let's turn down the threshold to something crazy, like 0.2. And so that way it makes the sun really bright. And, uh, and you can make this high quality, but this is a low quality animation, so I'll keep it low quality. And uh, there we go. So if we come over to rendering and hit F12, it takes about 0.8 seconds for each uh, file. And then we have the compositing that goes around it. So then we can render the animation and be good to go. And if this were my normal class, I would say any questions, concerns, or fears. And there would be silence because I like the way this looks. This looks pretty cool too. Uh, and so, uh, yeah, thanks for watching. This has been uh, a, a new and updated uh, terrible kitschy vaporwave landscape. Uh, please uh, DM me or text me on Twitter if you got any questions. Thanks.